Well, I have my two trusty associates here with me for the review. How's it going there, Vern, old buddy? Good to see you. And of course, uh, Sparky. Ah, uh, Sparky, I see you've got the uh, 27-year-old doors in front of you there already. I hope you haven't opened it. Well, welcome to Noel's World of Whiskey, and uh, as I get, give you a close-up of what I'm doing here, it's the 27, we did the 21, and now we're going to do the 27 doers, so uh, by cracky, let's get at her. Um, different than the other uh, container, the other one kind of a flip magnetic uh, uh, closure, this one's a little trickier, it's... Uh, I think the other one, uh, maybe there were some accidents or something with the other one, but we got to push this one out, I guess. It's, uh, I know that there was tape on these, and I think I've got all the tape cut off. There it is. It's just, just tight. Yeah. And there it is, the uh, 27. Doers 27. So, we will get at her. So well, anyways, uh, box away here, and let's open this baby up. Doers, we talked a lot about doers. Now this one here, I uh, believe is a, a Monolato, uh, if I remember rightly. Um, the other one was Oloroso. Hello, Cortado. Uh, fortified casks, seasoned casks, uh, aged or uh, finished in those casks. It's, it's quite a process of showing you this. Um, I think I explained it on the 21. Uh, let me just show you a quick picture of how it's being done on the back of the, of the box here. Um, just turn it around here so you can see it there. So... You can see they marry the, um, it's the first is the, uh, they do a single grain uh, and marry that with another uh, uh, single grain. Now these are stage one, stage two, and then that's on the on this side here, and I think it's what, about 10%. And then on this side here, you get the uh, the single malts in the same process. You have the, you know, the first stage and the second stage. And then you marry the two of them together, the, the 10% and the 90% uh, casks, and then they're uh, finished, of course, in the final uh, cask there. Uh, and, of course, that is the uh, Palo Cortado um, Amontillado. Uh, so there you are. Uh, that, that's a brief explanation. I didn't want to waste too much of your time. But, um, anyways, uh, that is the way they're doing the double-double. So, let's get into it. And, um... Oh! <laughs> tight! That was a tight cork. So there we are. And, um... Let's give it the nose. Ah, oh, wow. Honey! Lots of honey. Oh, I can smell the oak. You, do, you don't have something sit for 27 years and not be able to get a bit of oak. But there's the fruit. And it's got a richness, almost like a Demerara, like a rum. I almost would feel it was a rum finish, but this is a uh, Monolato. And the vanilla. Vanilla, it's the wood. 
but um, but it's got the spices, eh? Uh, um, but they're soft. They're not sharp spices. Uh, apricots, maybe some peaches. There's some chocolate notes. I'd say white chocolate. Um, but there's the wood again. The wood, the vanilla. A little bit of a um, little citrus stuff going on here. Like the sherry is, it's it's different because it's you know it's not the same as the twenty one, not the 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 the, hit, the heavy hit of Oloroso. It's it's a lighter smack, but it's a different kind of smack. It's there's some fragrance to it, and uh, again I, I guess it's uh, Palo Cotado, uh the Amontillado, and. Um, Slight whiff of smoke there. I just got a slight whiff of smoke. But uh, I'm going to say the Palo Cortado has is, is got some influence on this here. You know, I look at the color of this, I, I think it's a little bit lighter than the... Uh, I'm going to have to put the two together, the 21 and the 27. So, anyways, uh, let's get, get on to the palette here. So, Solange. Oh yeah, a little bit of salt there. I'd say salty, uh, salty honey. Maybe a little bit of fennel, ripe apricots. A little more honey, and then the oak. Yeah, the nose. The nose is in the in the palate. Red fruit. <clears throat> Um, like, I'm going to say when I, you know, with that, when I say uh, red fruit, it's a, uh, um, definitely uh, looking something between uh, maybe cooked apples, um, like an apple pie with um, a sugary apple pie, like, um, oh, like an apple crisp. <clears throat> But it's funny, I just keep getting a little bit of rum. I'm going to top myself up here. That's what I'm tasting is, it's like the Demerara rum, like a spice rum. The Bacardi spice rum. Just it's somewhere there in the background there. A little bit of that smoke again, charred, could be the charred casks. <clears throat> wow. Smooth, <laughs> the word smooth, I'm using it. Um, 27 years, the oak, shavings, oak shavings. And um, it's not a heavy, as heavy a hitter as the 21, but um, boy, there's just uh, lots of, lots of different layers that they keep coming and coming at you. Again, uh, some of the citrus stuff coming, you know, the, um, the lemon, the, the, um, something between the lemon and, uh, ah, gee, maybe back to the apple crisp, um, uh, chocolate. Okay, finish. I'm going to say it's a medium finish, a medium shortish medium finish, um, or medium short finish. <laughs> um, it's lighter than the, the 21, but it's, it's got its place. Like I like this stuff. It's it's different, definitely different than the 21. Uh, almost no bite or anything to it. It's just uh, you do get a little of that oak, but. Yeah, and I'm gonna say it's less oaky than the uh, the 18 um, Renaissance uh, Chapter Four, Glen Garrick. Um, little coating on the tongue, and little bits of uh, the honey, uh, sugary notes in the background. Slight bit of smoke, very slight. 
Don't know where the smoke or the charred stuff's coming from, but mixed with the oak. Yeah, the um, bit of herbal notes as she's as it's sort of uh, fading away there. <clears throat> We're gonna get the water going here, okay? But I'm gonna have to top up the glass. So the story behind this is that these casks, these uh, Palo Cortado casks from uh, Ares, Spain, they're rare. They're, they're some of the rarest uh, sherry casks in the world. It's like some six million um, bottles of sherry floating around and there's like a hundred thousand of these Palo Cortado bottles. So. Uh, Dewar's is spending some money, I guess, on these casks. And, um... They're playing around a lot with, uh, like, I like what Dewar's is doing. Um, when I was young, I drank Dewar's. When I was younger, like, with my, the college kids I hung out with, uh, we were... We weren't really Johnny Walker. I mean, the odd bottle of Johnny Walker flowed up, mostly from someone else, not from me. Um, I was the doers guy, and that's what I liked. So, and today I think they're doing it as good as they did ever. You know, they're they're somehow doers to me. They do some quality stuff. So, anyways, nose. Oh yes, the water opens it up. Now it's starting to to smell a bit more like the twenty one. It's Big bang of sweet Demerara rum. Wow. It's amazing what a few drops of water do. But here comes the um, the floral notes. And that's probably a monolato. Yeah, it's... Um, It's, it's definitely uh, got something, I keep getting back to that smoke, eh? Mixed in with, uh, with the oak. Smoke, charred, charred barrels probably. Okay, palette. Wow, you talk about the right amount of water, the right amount of drops of water. That just kind of completely different than the nose this time. I'm now getting the apples, but I'm not getting uh, apple pie. I'm getting more of the just ripe apples. Yeah, sweet ripe apples. And um, maybe uh, some pears, sweet pears. Um, you know, I'm, I, I'm going to say that... Um, I'm getting something completely different than what I was getting before. I'm, it's, it's like the profile just changed when I added water. Still getting a bit of the oak. The, um, there's no signs of the smoke or the charred barrels. But uh, fruity. It got fruity and a bit, you know, a bit of the floral stuff. But um, oh, this one's for me. Yeah, this is a, a drink you could serve anybody, anybody. It's amazing uh, how they do it. It's just the perfect blend. That's why I don't mind having blended scotches once in a while. I like to wander away every once in a while from a single just to keep my, uh, I want to keep an open mind towards scotch. I mean, they, they were blending scotches, bef you know, <laughs> a long time before single malts got popular. Mind you, Blended scotches come from single malts, so, and the only reason we got into blended uh, scotches is because of all the tax that was on uh, barley, malted barley. But they learned how to do it right, and this company certainly knows how to do it right. So, but uh, score wise, <clears throat> ah, right off the bat, you know, when I look at something like this, and you know, it's uh, and I, you know, twenty seven years old, it's got a good price on it, not quite as handsome a price as the twenty one. Forget what it was. Is that well? It was over a hundred bucks for a half a bottle, 
27, half a, what do you, you, you we'll, we'll say we got a half of a full bottle here. So that is well over 100, I don't know what it is, 120-ish, I'll have to check it and see. So, you know, that bears into my score, you know, I'm going to probably put it at an 87. It is affordable for somebody who could never afford a 27. They've done the right thing. Like, I like what they're doing. Put it in a half bottle, open it up, uh, availability to people that would never be able to afford a full bottle of this stuff. So, I, you know, I, I think they're doing the right thing. Um, so, basically, good whiskey, um, if you can afford it, you know, nice to have it in your, on your shelf. Um, some of the whiskeys I say, yeah, go grab them right away. They're a heck of a deal. I'm not going to say it's a heck of a deal. I think it's a fair price. And I think it's, it, it was, they, they designed it for people that wouldn't normally be able to afford it, a 27, but it's still pricey. Uh, so that bears into my score. So 20, I, I'd say 87 is a fair score. So anyways, I'm going to, um, ask you to drink wisely. Drink intelligently. Do not drink and drive. Until the next time, so long.